Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. I have this huge bag of pieces left over from projects that I've made over the years and I want to see if I can put some of these pieces together to make a beautiful quilt. The first step is going to be to go through these because I don't remember what's in here. Uh, so let's go through these, there's a lot of them, and see if there's blocks that aesthetically naturally go together. I'm pulling these out in no particular order, but I thought I would see, uh, start to make some piles of pieces that go nicely together. This is a Anna Maria Horner print. Uh, it's a great block, very bright, colorful. So I'll try and start a pile of kind of bright, colorful blocks over here. Okay, so here's just kind of a random, some random pieces. How many do I have of these? I have four of these and though they don't go perfectly together, I don't think that they would seem weird in the same project. So for now, I'm gonna put these in the same pile. This is a peekaboo block. Um, I made these in a video that you can go take a look at if you want. They all have little hidden things in them. This would certainly be a good baby quilt. So I'm gonna put this in a separate pile and maybe I'll make a full peekaboo quilt. Here's another peekaboo block. This one had um, teacups on the inside, tulip pink teacups, super cute. So I could make a full quilt of peekaboo blocks. And then here's another one, the horse. So that's all gonna go in its own section. This one here is a little bit more muted. I'll put that in a different pile. These ones could all go in the bright pile for sure. Those are just half square triangles. I have a little cutout sun, it's not really a block, but a cutout piece that I'll also put in that bright pile. This one is muted. I think these might have been from a, and these are kind of great. I think these are from like an improv quilt I was working on. These were from a watch what I make with my scraps video that I'll put in that muted pile. Same with all of these or a watch what I make with my scraps. That one's pretty great. I had forgot about that. I love these scrappy pieces where not, not all of them are the same, like all of the dark blues are not the same and all of the background are not the same. Interesting, okay. Um, so that's that. This was also one. Now I don't love this block because the middle is a little funky. So I think if I used this, I would want to applique something on top, like a circle. So I'll, I'll keep this and put that with the muted pile, uh, but I'd have to do a little surgery on that. Uh, this is also from a um, watch what I make with my scraps. Uh, okay, so here's a Halloween block. So this would be this would be a very different project, right? That would be hilarious if I put this Halloween block in with something that was not thematically appropriate. I made this the same at the same time as the Halloween block and I love this block. This is a great one. This could go in the muted colored one. And then these ones I think are also from that same video, the watch what I make with these scraps video. And these could go in that muted pile. These ones are gonna go in the muted pile, but these are kind of funny. These were the um, the ones I tried to do for the socialites block of a month that that quarter shop was hosting and I just kept making blocks that I just absolutely hated. Um, I put a lot of effort into these. Are these the ones that I put some hand stitching on? No, I guess not. That's probably coming up. I know I hand stitched some of the pieces, um, but this, those, will, those will go nicely with the muted pile. These are scraps left over from um, a brightly colored scrappy quilt that I made, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, this could definitely go in the pile, the brightly colored pile. This butterfly block kind of could go nicely with the peekaboo quilt, even though it's not peekaboo related. Um, I think it, the colors go nicely together. So I'll put that up there with the peekaboo stuff. Oh, and this is a little butterfly I made. I'll do the same with that. Though this is kind of a strange thing happening here um, that I don't really love. I don't know what, what's going on with that. I was trying to make a small butterfly, I think, but my fabric choices uh, for the middle are questionable. This is a fun one. Here is this really beautiful rose. I'll put that with the brightly colored pile. And this might just need to be its own thing. Um, 
this actually was a hilarious situation. So every day of the year, there are many national holidays. There's like four national holidays, like National Hot Dog Day or National Walk Your Dog Day, all kinds of things. And so I had made a video and said that I was going to look at what the days were for that day and make a quilt block based on one of those holidays. And so my holiday choices, I think, were something like National Bubblegum Day, National Weatherman Day, and then National Shower with a Friend Day, which I just was thought was the funniest thing because that seems like a very strange holiday. So of course I picked National Shower with a Friend Day and these elephants were supposed to have water spurting out of their noses um, or trunks and they were supposed to be like in the mud showering together or bathing together in some way. It's so weird. You can go look at that video. It's called something like National Craft. I don't know. I can't remember. If you look up, um, here, let me see what it is. The video is called National Shower with a Friend Day. Uh, so you can take a look at that if you want. This, what I think I'm going to do is have this be the center and then I'll just add some borders out and make it big enough to maybe be a little baby quilt. Um, unless I find some other blocks that would pair nicely with this, but I don't know. I'll put that aside and, and see what I want to do with that. Some of those there. I'm not, I'm not crazy about this fabric. I think actually I'll put these in the muted, kind of this darker pile over here. Let's see, what's this? This is a rose block. I did a video tutorial on this rose block. If you Google mostly quilts and rose quilt block, it'll come up. This one can go up in kind of this muted pile up there. Oh, these trees are fun. I really love these tree blocks. This one can go in the brightly colored one, even though it's not super bright. I mean, there's bright aspects to it. I think it'll be fine. These are half square triangles, a strip of them, and that'll go in the muted quilt, let's see, muted quilt, bright quilt, and a house block. I wonder if this one could go with the elephants. Let's see. I don't hate them together. I kind of like them in a weird way. It'd be nice if I could find two more blocks similar in aesthetic and size, and then that would be a nice combination to work from. I think these are a couple tree blocks. Let's see. Yes, so this one will go in the muted pile. That one's a really fun one, isn't it? And then this one can also, I think, go in that muted pile. Look how cute these teeny tiny pieces are. They're adorable. So those will definitely go in the muted section, probably all of these. Just kind of little pieced blocks put this in the muted pile over there. This is adorable, I applique. That frog on there, I think that could go with the muted. I'll put that there for now. This is super bright and will go with the bright section. Again, this is kind of muted. And I'm gonna put that with the muted as well. These actually were from um, my Quilt of Valor that I was making. And maybe I should keep them with that. I actually had decided that they didn't really go with the quilt of valor that I'm still making. I think I'm gonna put these in with the muted. I think they'll go better there than in the quilt of valor. Um, this first one here is very quilt of valor-ish, but the other ones, not so much. But I do love this block. I'd like to make more of those, that block. This one is definitely goes with the bright colored one. Love that. I have four of these, kind of fun, at least four, maybe five. I think five or maybe even six. Those will go in brightly colored. This is a great block. I remember making this. Isn't that a beautiful one? This will definitely go in brightly colored, though it could go in with the peekaboo blocks and the, and the butterfly. That all kind of has a nice combination together. But for now, we'll put that in brightly colored. These ones here, um, I think these ones should probably go in the muted. Now I'm remembering these are the ones from the Socialites block of the month that I did that hand piecing in because I felt like it did the, the blue kind of blended too much in with the gray. Uh, so I did, I did that, we'll put those in muted. Another one here. This is an appliqued flower block. Uh, I'm gonna put that in the, not sure what to do with yet. Here's another frog only this one is on a lily pad it's a pretty pretty awesome piece I'm gonna put that one aside 
see. This one is definitely muted. This one, hmm, muted. I'll put that in with the brightly colored. Muted, uh, brightly colored, muted. And then, um, what to do with these? They're pretty cool. I think I'm just gonna put the, those aside. I have a bunch of these hexagons that I did that I really like, and part of me feels like I should just put them all in one quilt. Uh, so I think that that's my, so these, one, these ones that I just flipped over kind of go together, and then these ones go separately. I could put these ones in with the muted, and then put these ones either in with the peekaboo stuff. Um, I think I'll do that. I think I'll put these ones in with the peekaboo blocks. There's a bunch of these little pieces that, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna put these aside too. These pieces here, I'll put in with the muted, just kind of randomly pieced, but kind of cool. This is a really nice one for the, for the muted quilt. I love that. This can go in muted. This can go just somewhere else. I actually really, really like this very much. It's strange, but I like that. Uh, so I'll put that in with the muted. Same with this. This is another another strange one that I like a lot. This one is also for the muted. These probably need to go somewhere random. These were some tree blocks for my quilt block exchange. This one can actually go in brightly colored. This one needs to go somewhere random. Same with this one, I think. This one could actually go in the brightly colored, even though it has that dark background. We'll see how that works. Oh, here's some tulip pink ones. So these will certainly go in the brightly colored. We have this one, this one, this one. So those are all, all brightly colored pieces and this one. And then same with these. These are also Tula, but they're a little bit more pieced. So I put these together a little bit more thoroughly, but not totally making a whole lot of sense. Like, I don't know why I did that, but I did. These are really fun. And then this bothers me because it doesn't have the stripe. So I don't know, I might have to take that apart. There's that one. And then a bunch of polka dot blocks, another parrot. And then here's another one that doesn't have the stripe on that center triangle. And then this beauty of the dragonfly. This is pieced and I think I'll take some of it apart. Like this is not really quilting cotton up here. So I think I'll keep this one, this one, and the divers together and then take off the blue and the brown and use those somewhere else. So I'll put those in brightly colored. Part of a cathedral window into muted colors. And I'll put that with, not sure what to do with. These can all go in brightly colored, I mean in uh, muted. More cathedral windows, which will go in the muted. This one is, these two are sewn together. Put that in muted. And then I bet the majority of this will, oh, what is this? Okay. So I think actually these are a couple of leftover blocks of something I have been working on that's not complete yet. So I'm gonna hang on to these for now in case I need them. But these ones, this is pretty great. I love those colors together. Those can definitely go unmuted. Same with that. And same with this strange piece here. And last pieces here, I have I think three of this block. And I'm just gonna put this aside for now. So I think what I'm gonna work on first is this pile here, kind of this muted pile. I'm gonna lay these all out and see if I can start putting some pairs together that look like they kind of make sense. Before I lay them all out, and I, I am gonna lay them all out, I did sew some pieces together, so I wanted to quickly show you that. I just kind of sewed blocks that were of similar size together. 
So like this one, I wasn't necessarily looking for aesthetic um, because all of these kind of aesthetically I, I thought went together well. I'm trying to remember for this one, I think, I think I sewed these pieces together and then I sewed the border on as well. And those are pretty cool actually. This is a similar one. I had the, the mushroom up here, just attach those together. So when I lay these out, since I already have some of this piece, it's gonna be kind of easier to see where things, where things go. This one I'm not totally sold on. Um, I like this piece a lot. I'm not sure about how I combined it with this one. Um, there's a lot of blank space around here. I don't know, I'm gonna see once I get it into the full piece, see how it works. I sold, sewed a bunch of these flying geese together. And then there's just a bunch of kind of smaller pieces that I sewed up. This one's kind of cute, really fun. Here's a nice long strip. So this can either go vertical or it can go horizontal in the quilt, It'll be useful. This one I put together, this one is a smaller uh, diamond than the top and bottom. This is kind of a random piece. Star, I just put the top and side on and then I'll do a different fabric for the other side perhaps. And tree and deer. Then I sewed, I think two of these were already sewn together and then I attached a third, I attached this one because this one's background is different. So these ones both have the brown background and then this has the tan stripey background, uh, which doesn't bother me at all. Then I found some pieces that I had forgot about somewhere else that was not in that bag. So I can use these. Here's another one that I put a top and a side on, a little house. Now this is pretty stark white and I think it's really the only stark white I have so far, so I might not use that. That's kind of a fun piece. This one, I think we already looked at this one together. I didn't attach that to anything. Okay, and then these pieces, I don't think I did anything with them. These were ones we already looked at that still need to put with other, be put with other pieces. So let's go ahead and lay all these out. Here are the pieces laid out. It's looking pretty chaotic, um, but there is some cohesion happening. There's a lot of visual activity here. Um, so I need to find some way to make it a little bit less busy. I have some thoughts of what I'm gonna put together next. So for example, I don't know if you know those two will go there, but these pieces here need to be sewn together and then those pieces need to be sewn together and then I can kind of see what to do with those. Maybe I can put a strip of fabric kind of in between all four units um, at that point. In addition, I think I'll put this unit and this unit together. And what else? Up here, the deer is already attached to the tree, but I think I'm gonna add these piano keys along the side. And then in addition, the tree up here, I'll add those little uh, thin strips to the tree to give it a little bit of length. Over here, I'll sew these piano keys to that unit. And finally down here, I'm gonna sew this piece. I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine the frog with these two half square triangle units here and then you know add some pieces onto the side. Beyond that, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. I figure I'll sew that stuff together and then come up with a plan what to do next. There will also be some pieces that I'll probably take out that I'll certainly take out, but I kind of wanna see how things are progressing before I make before I start taking things away, because uh, they might be useful. So let me sew those pieces up and then we'll see what's next. After fiddling with this project for some time, I actually took some of these pieces apart. Uh, I think that they weren't really working all that well together, so I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit. I think I had this one attached to this piece here. Uh, it just wasn't totally working for me, so I took it off. Uh, point being, I have a lot of pieces here, but I'm actually feeling like 
to move on at this point, I need, I need more things. So what I've done is I've made a fairly large piece that I wanna kinda start working from. Let me show you that. I am not going to move much further in this video. I'm actually gonna stop here. But this is the big piece that I've made that I'm really very happy with. And going forward, I'd like to start to continue to put pieces together as I acquire them and make this piece grow. So unfortunately, this is not gonna be what I wanted it to be in terms of the video itself. I wanted to finish this video with a completed quilt. Instead, I'm finishing it with this smaller piece here, but I think it's a really good size and it's a good spot to start from. So hopefully you gained some inspiration in this video. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.